how do you turn your passion into cash? Bill Walsh is America's business expert. He teaches entrepreneurs across the globe how to create massive business success. You may not realize it, but now more than ever is the best time to become an entrepreneur. I'm here with America's business expert, Bill Walsh, and he's here to give us some strategies on not only how to get started, but how to find success as an entrepreneur. Bill, welcome to the show. Please, thanks for having me. How yeah, are you? I'm so glad you're here. So why is it such a good time to become an entrepreneur? Well, if you think about it, right, it's like the perfect storm. You know, there's so many challenges in the job marketplace. There's so many super talented people, and we no longer live in just one local economy. I mean, today when you launch a business, you're now in the global economy. So where could it be ever taken place where literally you could come up with an idea and then have that idea sell your product all over the world? Instantly for, I mean, a 13-year-old kid making $50,000 a month selling hot sauce. Unheard of. Yeah, I hear such <laughs> amazing stories about success from people who come up with an idea and then they're in business almost overnight. Yeah, because think, years ago it would cost you tens of thousands of dollars, millions of dollars to even launch, or even a franchise, you know? But today you can start a business for you know, less than a couple thousand dollars, get an idea out there, get good media, get good print, and before you know it, because of social media, now you've got customers all over the world wanting your product. Tell me a little bit about you. Oh, me, <laughs> obviously a background born in the south side of Chicago, mm -hmm. uh, very hardworking family, and for me it was really cool that I was around really smart people that said, you know what, anything's possible. And from that, uh, obviously went to a regular, went to a great school, went to Loyola University, mm -hmm. and then from there I uh, was a trader, then real estate, then startups. So I spent two decades doing startups. You had a good idea, I was your guide. Come help you launch the idea, build it, get the teams around it, and bring that product to the marketplace. And around 2000, I said, why keep doing it for all these other companies? We can create products to do it for every company. Mm -hmm. And we launched a product called Successfolio, a business in a box that gave you a website, a business plan, and an organizational plan to really launch and grow that business. And before you know it, we were doing business in 20 plus countries, helping small business grow. And we launched a Rainmaker Summit program which is our business intensive program, and now I speak all over the world. Uh, I've written a new book called The Obvious, really about inspiring entrepreneurs to really do their best, but to step outside that comfort zone. You know, what does it really look like to live your dreams, have a big plan, and then execute it with having a great team? And I do believe today, once again, it's the best time to be an entrepreneur. So take us step by step. So you're sitting at home, you want to start your own business. Right. How do you position that business for growth? You've got this big idea. So what I right. always recommend, first of all, is that is it in alignment with who you are? Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. you always hear this thing, well, just find your passion and make money. Well, that's part of it, you know what I mean? And you can dream about it too, but I think also then what you have to do is that once you've got this idea, you've got to ask yourself, does your product or service does it actually serve a lot of customers? Mm -hmm. You know, and then of course, number three is how big is the market opportunity? In other words, is there a big opportunity to win? Because I think so often for a lot of people, they dream about it, but they never do it. Which means, you know, there's an old saying that says, you know, you don't have to, um, you don't have to be great to start, but you have to start to be great. You know, right. and what a concept that is in business. And, and I think if you look at the global economy today, most of the largest brands in the world, some are less than 30 years old. Right. You know, it's interesting because we hear about people who have ideas for businesses. I mean, you're out to lunch with your friends. Right. You hear people, I've always wanted to start a business like this. But a lot of people just don't pull the trigger. Why is that? Uh, fear. Yeah. Fear is the number one answer. And I think a lot of times what happens is people get very comfortable. Yeah. They get kind of like, you know, everything's kind of going along good, but they don't realize that, you know, most people in our country in the U.S. are probably six months away from being broke. Which means they were let go from their job. They don't have a lot to fall back on. So I always tell people this is a great time to start a part-time business. You know, find even either a home-based business or an internet business or something that can generate some extra revenue for you. One of the hottest things today is membership sites. Right. You know, if you've got a good, let's just say you're good at gardening. You can literally launch a membership site, you know, sell a program where you teach people how to garden or cooking mm -hmm. for $10 a month where you give your great tips on video today, on audio, and if you just had an extra 500,000 customers paying you 10 bucks a month, and the thing is, once again, you're no longer doing business in your backyard. Your backyard is now the world. So it sounds like there are a lot of easy ways to break into being an entrepreneur. Yes. But break it down for us step by step. If you needed to get started, like say you had an idea. So once again, so the first thing job. you got an idea, right? <laughs> okay. The second thing is you have to become a great leader. You right. have to be the one that's going to be the janitor, be the CEO, the CFO. You really have to be willing to do all the work. So mm -hmm. become the great leader. Uh, the next thing is have a great plan. Right. 
Right. I mean, if you were to take a vacation, you would call the travel agent, you'd book this, you'd book that. It's the same in business. You're going to build a house. You start right. with a plan. It's no different in business. Start with a great plan. So figure out, once again, who's the customer you'd like to serve, right? What does it look like a year from today, two years from today, three years from today? And what does it take to actually make that become a reality? Whereas, do you actually have a budget for that? Right? So as part of your plan, you've got to make sure that have you actually thought through all the necessary items to get that business going? You know, do you have a website? You know, do you have a way to take credit cards? Do you have a marketing team? You know, what are the things that have to go into that process to make it become successful? And then, of course, once again, who do you surround yourself with? So you have to find a team. And I think people say, well, that's where I get scared. I don't have the money for a team. You'll find that you can barter, you can partner, you can hire people that play at things you have to work at. And they'll make your job a lot easier because they're great at finding some 20-year-old kid that's brilliant at making websites. And the funny thing is that they're all over every college campus in this country. And they're probably a thousand times better than you are trying to do these things. So <laughs> let them true. do it, you know what I mean? And, and then from there, once you've got those things rolling, then it's really about building the business. So who's going to become your joint venture partners? Mm -hmm. you know? And the last thing that most entrepreneurs never think about is that, what's your exit strategy? How do you get out of the business? And sometimes getting out of the business means that you've brought a two or three people on to really help grow the business, while you can go either do something else or find something that, once again, is kind of like your next step in the evolution. And that's a great way to get it started. Bill, so when you are getting started and you're putting this business together, how important is it to be organized? Well, you know, that's always a, a thing that I see a lot of times. And sometimes I do believe that I would rather have ignorance on fire <laughs> than knowledge on ice. I like that, ignorance right? because, on fire. Well, because what happens a lot of times is that, you know, People get paralysis of analysis. Mm -hmm. They talk about it, they talk about it, they talk about it, but they never do it. Right. And so I'm a big believer, start. And, and you're going to have mistakes, you're going to have errors, but there's no doubt that when you can go from being busy, because I believe busy equals broke, <laughs> it is, it's yeah. true to being productive. Right. And productive starts with organized. And organized and productive means profitable. So I believe the transition is a lot of people start with busy, but then shift into productive. And, and what happens for most of us is that we get so busy doing things we should never be doing. You'll find that millionaires, they delegate everything. I recommend every small business get a virtual assistant mm -hmm. as quickly as you possibly can. Get someone that'll read your emails, do your social media, do the follow-up calls. So you're not doing the busy things, you're really doing the productive things, which is focusing on customers, focusing on relationships to bring in new customers. And instead of actually doing all the things that you know you shouldn't be doing. And you know, when, you, when you're on path and purpose with a vision that's pulling you, you know you're doing the right things. Not only that, it's gonna show up in the cash register. <laughs> <laughs> that that's is. the bottom line. That's how you measure how successful right. your business yeah. is, by I mean, do you attract clients? Yeah, in other words, are you really good? There's an old saying that says, customers are good for business. <laughs> what a concept that is. And, and I think what happens is that many businesses as they grow, they forget the fact that without their customers, they have nothing. Mm -hmm. You know, so they think just because they're in business, they deserve customers. That's not the case. You have to provide massive value, continue to have great customer loyalty programs, and keep the follow-up going. Because if you don't do that, believe me, your competition, they're one click away. You know, it's interesting here in uh, America, and I know the show is global, but you know, entrepreneurialism is, in fact, the American dream. You know, everybody came it, over, they started their businesses, and some of those businesses still exist today. Absolutely. And as you know, I get to travel all over the world. Mm -hmm. I mean, literally, there's, uh, you know, this year alone, I've been around the world four or five times. Wow. And, and the neat part is that it doesn't matter where you go, um, the entrepreneurial spirit is totally alive. I mean, they are so excited to launch and grow a business, but no matter where you go, they would love to have their business here in the U.S. Hmm. Doesn't matter where you go to, they just can't wait to expand and grow in the business. I mean, I've been in Singapore, Malaysia, I've been in China, I've been in uh, Italy, I've been in France, I've been in London, and it's the same theme everywhere. That as great as we think it is here, they think it's even better. So we think sometimes, well, things aren't so good and all the challenges, fiscal this, fiscal that, it doesn't matter. Entrepreneurs are hungry and they love to do business in the States. And why is that? Because of the spirit here. Yeah. You know, they realize that anything in the U.S. is possible. You know, in many underdeveloped countries, we don't realize how good we have it here. Right. That's the funny thing. You go to other parts of the world, even in Australia, you know, as, as awesome as Australia is doing, their economy is doing great. Believe it or not, many of their entrepreneurs feel like they only get a very small part of the, of the global success education that's available. But they love the fact when speakers come from around the world or authors or trainers will come and share their message there because a lot of times they feel like they're so far away from everything yet. But in the reality, they're doing phenomenal. I mean, Canada. You know, Canada, many parts of Canada have underemployment. Wow. You know, so I don't believe there's a shortage of opportunity. I believe there's a shortage of people's willpower to get through the adversities they're going to face. 
Where do you think that people should look for a business idea? Well, I think first of all, they should look to what are they great at. Right. You know, ask yourself, what are you really good at and does it serve lots of people? Don't be doing something just because your friend or your brother or your cousin, oh, this is a great business, right? Someone else was successful yeah, at that. Yeah, you'll, you'll have no problem. What happens is right. that they wind up doing something that's out of alignment with who they are. Mm -hmm. And then it's only a matter of time before they fail. Mm -hmm. And I see this happen a lot with entrepreneurs because you know what? They think that because someone else did it, they can do it. That's right. not always the case. You have to have something from your input, you know, your inside that says, you know what? This is what I would love to do. And then once again, does it serve people? Is there a market opportunity? Because without those things, you know what? It's only a matter of time. You could say, well, I'm great at moving sand. <laughs> well, that's awesome. You can go to the beach and have a great time, but there's no one buying your product. Right. Does that make sense? So, and it's also, I think Gretzky said it best. He said, you know, figure out where the puck's going, not where the puck is at, right? Mm -hmm. Same in business. Figure out where the market's going, figure out where the world's going, and get there first. Yeah, I've heard that where it's important to start with that vision. You know, start what's your bigger, bigger vision? vision Absolutely. And then aim for that. And even if you take like a little zig over here and go in this direction, you still end up on target. It's yeah. amazing how that works. I mean, if you look at, I mean, even like Dr. John Martini, he said, mm -hmm. you know, start with an astronomical vision, you'll create global <laughs> change. Wow. Right? I and like I, and that. I think that's a big part of what business needs today is that we need more vision. You know, we need more individuals like Steve Wynn. The guy is almost legally blind, but he has great what? He has great vision. Right. And the funny thing is when you start with a really big vision, you'll feel so much more inspired. You don't need motivation because I think motivation for most, it's so overrated. Right. I mean, I always tell people, I say, <laughs> what happens if you motivate a bunch of idiots? You got a bunch of motivated idiots, right? <laughs> They're all busy, but where are they going? Nowhere. Right. What people need today is education. They need inspiration, passion, belief. And I think what we need is, and, and I read this the other day that, you know, our country needs more role models. I think we have plenty of leaders, plenty of role models. I just don't think they get the message. That's why I love what you're doing with your show, yeah. is the fact that you're really featuring individuals that give people practical, consistent ideas to help them launch and grow and build companies. As you know, innovation is right. what made this country great and is what will make this country great again, but we have to foster innovation. We have to empower small business. Yeah, don't be afraid to start a new category. Absolutely right. I mean, think about it. When Red Bull started, they laughed at him. Right. They laughed at Red Bull. At, Who's going to buy the energy drink, right? Now it's, <laughs> it's a like, booming it's on business. Fire. Yeah. Yeah. Even, listen, even when Jeff Bezos launched a mm -hmm. small company called Amazon, they right. said people are not going to buy books online. Well, mm -hmm. let me tell you what. They're buying books online. They're buying everything online. You can, you can say you heard this here that within four or five years, Amazon will be the largest e-tailer and probably retailer in the world. Mm -hmm, I believe they're, that. They're launching programs now to build centers to deliver products in one day to your home. Same day delivery. You order online, it's delivered right to your house. So I, I think that you know, record sales online, I think that this last year they had uh, you know, the big Black Friday sales were north of $2 billion, or that mm -hmm. side run it, more, north of $2 billion in one day. I mean, they laughed about it. They said, oh, internet shopping is not going to be there. I'm telling you, it's here and it's here to stay. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about pricing. A lot of entrepreneurs are that's very great, frightened that's a great to topic. charge what they're worth. I mean, they, they're worth topic. something, but they're like, oh, I don't you know, know how to charge. I, you know, I think what happens for most entrepreneurs is that, once again, fear sets in. Right. My recommendation for all entrepreneurs and small business owners, stop lowering your price. Just get this clear. Stop lowering your price <laughs> and increase your value. Right. What a concept that is. Don't be afraid to charge high prices, just give great value. Right. People will pay 10 times more for a great experience than they're ever going to pay for a discounted product they're not sure about. They love a great experience. And I think that that's such a, a relevant point because when you're slashing your prices all the time, yes. you get in this cycle where people are waiting for the next price reduction. That's right. Forget it. I say increase your prices, just add more value. Mm -hmm. I don't believe that people mind paying high prices. Right. What they don't like is they don't like inferior service or inferior value. They're right. looking, and the only thing that your customers buy is one thing, they buy results. They're looking for better results. You know, and, and I think it's important, too, is when you think about, you know, we've heard this even in economics class about the lifetime value Absolutely. of a customer. You know, if you treat them well, not only will they'll they come stay, back. Not only will they come back, here's what most people don't realize. One of your greatest resources for new business is satisfied customers. Right. Because who do they know? They know more people just like them. Mm -hmm. You know, recommendation is simple. Look at your business today and look at your top 20% customers. Mm -hmm. Every day, call one of your best customers. Just give them a call and say, listen, I appreciate your business. Thanks so much for being awesome. What else can we do to add even more value to you as a customer? That's a great strategy. Do you know strategy. how far that yeah. goes for a business? I mean, literally, who do the 20 percenters know? More of the 20 percenters. Mm -hmm. So if you give them massive value, they're the first one to go out and talk about how much you've helped them. 
my whole business changed when I changed my acumen from what, what could I get to what could I give. Mm -hmm. In other words, how could I serve people that played at a super high level and give them massive value? And this is the key, expect nothing in return. Right. It is unbelievable what happens when you start adding value to folks that play at a super high level and expect nothing in return because they will tell everybody how you serve them. It's an old saying, if you want to be more successful, serve more. Right. <laughs> what a concept. Well, and I also like that um, quote, and I say this to a lot of different people, through service to others, we find ourselves. Absolutely. And oftentimes when we're helping other people with their business or with their lives, we get inspired to add a new product or a new service That's or write sure. a new book because we're already just, we're just taking care of the people that we love. It goes back to that. You're only as good as the people you serve. Right. You know, and you know, it's sad that Zig Ziglar passed away, mm -hmm. you know, just this year. And, they, you know, you talked about last year, he said, you know, that, you know, if you help other people get what they want, you get what you want. Right. And, and I wish that, I wish that phrase was put on more businesses today. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's really sad that, I mean, here's an individual who spent his whole life of service, and yet most people in our country have no idea who he is. Yeah. Isn't that sad? He got one blurb on the news channels, and here's an individual that's inspired millions and millions of people all over the world to live even more inspired lives. But it goes back to that same saying, right? You tell me who you serve and I'll tell you about your success. Let's talk a little bit about social media and video <laughs> testimonials. I mean, yeah. how powerful are those for well, growing your well, business Well, obviously, as, an I, as you probably know, I mean, Google's big, right? Right. But the funny thing is that YouTube gets more unique visitors per day than Google. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which means that people love to see things on video. And, and you're going to find, too, that, you know, they say that a picture is worth a thousand, you know, a thousand words. I'm telling you that a good video is worth millions of customers. Right. I mean, if you look at, you know, some of the, some of the rock stars of the music space that were, they started first on YouTube. Mm -hmm. They were YouTube sensations Justin first. Justin Bieber. Justin Bieber. There you <laughs> yeah. go. But even, even, you know, if you look at some of the individuals that today, where can you get global media for free? Mm -hmm. And all you have to do is have something funny that's catchy that gets your message out there. And before you know, people start talking about you, it goes viral. Right. And then, as soon, I mean, look at Susan Boyle. Yeah. I mean, nobody knew who Susan Boyle was, right? I all don't of a sudden, the chills as right, we talk all about of a sudden, her, she yeah. had five million visitors on our YouTube right. channel. And and before you know it, she was selling records all over the world. So every customer you work with, if you get a chance to do video testimonials, super powerful. And then get a company that knows social media to broadcast it properly. Right. And it's so easy, too. I mean, you can just, now you can use your phone or your iPad, you know. They and it's say, free. Thank you, I loved your business. Right. And you just say, hold on, will you say that again? Can you, can you do that one more time? Right. I mean, really that, you know, the phone today is everything for a small business. Mm -hmm. I mean, I believe that small business, if you're not mobile, you are missing millions and millions of opportunities. I mean, 25 billion plus downloads on iTunes today on apps, wow. right? And it's not going to slow down. Uh, six of the 10 fastest growing economies in the world, Africa. They'll be 99% mobile ready within two years mm -hmm. to buy globally. I mean, if you're not thinking about doing business in Africa, you're crazy. There is so much huge opportunity. Think about it. You've got a, a millions and millions of people that are ready to buy that couldn't buy until now. Mm -hmm. And now because of mobile applications, mobile buying, they're going to become one of the largest buying units in the world. And, and, and no one's actually marketed them yet. So if you haven't put your business online through mobile apps yet, this is a great time to get, get ahead of the curve. You know, I have a strategy too that, that would be really helpful is when you're creating these videos, if you don't know what to make them about, make them a how-to video. People you, love people love how-to videos. They just love right? that. Well, we've become programmed in the U.S. Mm -hmm. that it's five ways to do this, two ways right. for that, seven. I mean, you don't think that Stephen <laughs> Covey knew the eighth habit when he wrote the seven habits, right? He, right. Knew, he knew those well in advance. And I right. think the same thing is that, you know, if you're getting started, you have to make sure that Customers are looking for the answers. Right. Right. They don't want more training. They want the results. Yes. So step, get, by step, step by step. By step. So if yeah. you give them specific ways to get to the result they're looking for, they're going to buy from you. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about your book, The Obvious. Oh, it's a fun book. So you probably heard of the movie called The Secret, right? Yeah. So I decided to write a brand new book called The Obvious. You actually have to get off the couch. <laughs> you have to do some of it because you can dream about it all you want, right? But at the end of the day, all the dreaming in the world is not going to make it happen like actually taking action. So The Obvious really talks about the laws for universal success, which means, you know, are you doing the right things? Are you planning? Are you working at it? Are you actually serving the customers? Are you creating value? Because a lot of times what happens is that we go from being busy, right. and then before you know it, we wound up running out of money, right. and these companies run out of business. Mm -hmm. You know, for a small business- I know when Hostess went under, I mean, that was like, how can that happen? How does it happen when you got <laughs> yeah, that kind of Yeah, it's an institution. It is know? an institution, and I think mm -hmm. once again that, but it's a sign of the times that 
the innovators are winning over and over. Mm -hmm. So the obvious is talks about becoming an innovator in your space, which means own your space. Right. Pick that niche, own that niche. I believe specialists get wealthy, generalists get paid. Yeah. Right. So stop trying to be everything for everybody and be the one person that's great in the space you're in. I've noticed that a common problem with entrepreneurs is entrepreneurial ADD. You know, they start one business and right. then start another, right. and then I kind of do this here's on the an, side. But with here's the an easy way. To, here's an easy way to solve that. Right. The word mm -hmm. focus means follow <laughs> one course until successful. Okay. Follow one course until successful. I like but that. What that really means is that get your business doing at least a million bucks a year. Mm -hmm. Take one idea, one business serves lots of people, make sure it's in alignment, make sure you're going to play full out. Give yourselves a couple years to build a real business. Mm -hmm. I don't believe in get rich quick. Right. I think get rich quick means get broke faster. Yeah. It you, does. You get rich and then you get broke. <laughs> it's, it happens just like that because what happens, you're not building something on a great foundation. So why not take a couple of years and build a real business? Mm -hmm. Why not actually put the effort behind it, create value, acquire lots of customers, you know, and then serve those customers? In business, two things you'll do to have lots of success. Number one is acquire the customer. Mm -hmm. Number two is retain the customer. If you can do those two things really well, the rest of it will take care of itself. But you're not going to do that unless you really provide massive value in the one space. I would never want my plumber doing my eye surgery. It's <laughs> yeah, not going to happen, that's right? Scary. I want a, I want a great <laughs> eye surgeon. That's all they're great at. You know what I'm saying? And I think it's the same thing. Your customer wants you to be awesome in the space you're in, and they would love to do business with you as long as you can bring them the results they're looking for. You know, a good friend of mine is a Harvard professor in business, yeah. and he said the mistake that most business owners make is they don't stay in that business long enough right. to reach the point of success. They get on it, they're doing it 12 months, 18 months, and then they shift off what they were doing that was successful and then all the success goes away. I always like to say, you know, go out there and look at the businesses in your space. Right. You know, model the top five or ten businesses mm -hmm. in your space. Who really is best in class? Mm -hmm. And how long did it take them to get there? If it's a pioneer, it's always going to take you two or three years longer, right. which means you need ten times the capital. But if you're <laughs> in a space where someone's already been successful, um, when Howard Hughes went to and he bought the airline called TWA, mm -hmm. he went and worked as a baggage handler. Right. Because he wanted to learn the business from the ground up. Mm -hmm. And so it's the same thing in your business. If you don't give that business time to succeed, it's going to fail. It'd be like getting married and telling your wife, let's have a baby, but I want the baby in three months. Can you make that happen right now? It's not <laughs> going to happen. Right. And it's the same in business. And what happens, like you said, they get ADD, HDD, ADD, <laughs> right? And before you know it, um, they know everything about a business they're no longer involved with. Isn't that just, that's heartbreaking, it's so, really. It's so sad. And, and, yeah. I, and I also know that many times your closest point to success is failure. Right. I mean, they're right there on the edge and they quit. Yeah. And a lot of times that's why I always recommend get a great team. Right. Get a team. Get some great mentors that have had success in your space. We teach a program that's all about hiring what are called unemployable experts. Right. Which means go find someone that's great <laughs> in that space. They've mm -hmm. already been massively successful. Right. They have no interest in just getting paid. They love the idea of market equity, and they love the idea of building things. Right. They'll come work because the brand is successful. They mm -hmm. make a lot more money when the brand is successful, but wouldn't you be more than happy to pay extra money knowing that you've got a team on board that's working with you on an outcome basis versus paying them all kinds of money and hoping you have success. Yeah. And there's Wishful plenty of those thinking. people out, but right. there's plenty of those unemployable. I ran an ad in the Wall Street Journal. I had 2,000 responses in two days. Wow. I said, I'm looking for sharp individuals, maybe already retired, that have already made significant income in their space. They love the idea of market pay, growing brands, and they love the idea of actually being an equity owner and getting a piece of the global business. That's very smart. 2,000 resumes. Ugh. One guy wrote and said, I sold my company for $40 million. I'm just looking for something to do. I mean, it's unbelievable <laughs> how much talent there is yeah. out there as long as you're willing to step outside your comfort zone to find those individuals right. because they're there. Yeah, and no, no reason to be threatened by them. You know, some no, people are no. like, I have to protect my idea. Yeah. So they don't launch the idea because right. they want to protect the idea. Well, the other thing is they believe they have to own the whole company. Right. Most of us know that Bill Gates is the largest shareholder in a small company called Microsoft, right? <laughs> right. You know, but yeah. they don't know that he only owns less than 4% of the company. Right. So it's much better to have a, you know, a small piece of something really big versus a big piece of something that stays really small. So <laughs> talk to me about, you said the universal laws of business success. Share with us at least one of them. Well, let me give you one of them. Obviously, what I realized a long time ago is that unless you're willing to get outside your comfort zone and really serve people, I mean, truly understand that service is not about how much money you can make, right? Mm -hmm. It's really about how many people can you serve. And so one of the things we talk about, which will really help a lot of entrepreneurs, is that 
you know, when you're starting your business and you're just getting going, um, we teach a simple law called motivation versus inspiration, right? And what happens for motivation is it keeps you busy all the time. Motivation might be great if you work at a car sales lot, right? Yeah. Might get you excited about your job for the day. <laughs> but what we realize <laughs> yeah. is that true inspiration comes from within. Right. So what I believe is that if you if you just draw a simple circle here and a line to the right and it says, here's where I'm at today, here's where I'm going tomorrow, start with a really big vision and make sure the vision lines up with your values and your actions. Mm -hmm. Which means a lot of people tell me that, you know, I really want to get in shape but they sit on the couch all day eating bonbons. Right. They're not getting in shape. Everybody wants to get in shape, nobody wants to go to the gym, right? <laughs> right. But what you'll find is when you start with a big enough vision, it will literally pull you to your goals. Right. It is unbelievable how powerful this becomes, and, and in business, one more idea is that become what's called an intuitive performer. Mm -hmm. Become someone that operates from a place called unconscious competence. You don't have to think about it. You literally own that space, and you own it because you know the space, you serve tons of customers, and you're getting paid for it. Just a couple of different laws. Yeah. Amazing advice from Bill Walsh, America's <laughs> business expert. Thank you so much for Please, being with us for on me. the Absolutely. show. And it's been great. Incredible tips. Thank you. And, and, and thanks again for having me. It's been awesome. Yeah, thank you.